In this video, we're going to look at some household vocabulary. Some of these words are quite basic, but some of them are relatively advanced. They're words that all native speakers know, but that non-native speakers often only learn if they've lived in an English-speaking country for a long time. My mom has very kindly agreed to help me again with the filming. And if you'd like to say hi to her, you can do so in the comments section. Okay, so we're going to start in the bedroom. Here we have a bed. I'm sure you know the word bed, but you might not know the parts of the bed. This here is the bed frame, so the part that you put the mattress on is the bed frame. This here is the mattress. Mattress. On top of the mattress, we have a bed cover. Some people would call this a quilt, but I'd call this a bed cover. Under that, we have some blankets. These are blankets. And then we have some sheets. This is the top sheet. You can also call it a flat sheet. And then on the mattress, we have a fitted sheet. It's called a fitted sheet because it fits onto the mattress. Here we have some pillows. Be careful. Some people get these mixed up. So this is a pillow and this is a cushion. A cushion is something that's normally decorative. Yeah, you might have cushions in your lounge room and also in other parts of the house. Um... A pillow is something that you sleep on where you put your head. Um, what else? Oh, yes. This on top of the pillow is called a pillow slip. In Australia, pillows are normally rectangular. Uh, where I lived in Europe, normally they had square pillows, and it took me a long time to adapt. I don't think I did actually adapt. I think I managed to find rectangular ones somewhere. This is cat hair because Monty likes to sleep on my bed during the day, not at night. At night, you go into your little room, don't you? We lock you away. Now, this here is a painting. Uh, here we have a regular chair, but I've also put a... I've put a towel on the chair because Monty likes to scratch this material. And yeah, that stops him from doing that. This is the window. This part here is called the window sill. The window sill. Uh, okay. These are blinds. You can just say a blind if it's all one piece, but when it's in pieces like this, we call them blinds. These are vertical blinds. I think it's obvious why we call them that. Now, this thing here is a bedside table. Bedside tables don't always look like this. Um, they don't always have a drawer, for example. But if you have a small table next to a bed, it's called a bedside table. Uh, this is a drawer, like I said. Um, be careful. Because in British English, we don't pronounce the E at the end. We just say draw. Um, here we have my glasses and the glasses case. This is a glasses case. Here we have a little cloth. Any little piece of material that you use to clean something is usually called a cloth. Here we have a clock. Um, this is an alarm clock. I don't like to use my phone. I know lots of people use their phones, but I don't like having my phone in my room at night, so I use an old-fashioned alarm clock. Here we have some tissues, and this is a lamp. The part on the top here, this part just here, is called the lampshade. Lampshade. Here we have a light switch. A light switch. Here we have, um some pictures and this part on the outside is called a frame or a picture frame if you want to be specific and here we have my very sexy winter dressing gown this here is a door 
I'm sure you know the word door, but here's some more vocabulary related to doors. The part on the outside is called the door frame. The door frame. This thing here is a doorknob. A doorknob. Yes, the K in knob is silent. And these things here are the hinges. One hinge, two hinges. Down here we have some cables. You can also call these cords. So here is the cord from the computer, and this long one here is an extension cord. Uh, you can also call it an extension cable. And the thing joining them is called this piece of plastic here. This is called a double adapter. Double adapter. This here is my computer desk. Here we have some earphones. Uh, this is a keyboard. Keyboard. That's the computer. That's not just the screen. Um, the computer is all in there. This is a mouse, and we often put a mouse on a mouse pad. This is a mouse pad. And here we have a coaster. A coaster is something that you can put a drink on. This is another chair. Again, I'm sure you know the word chair. Um, but this is an office chair. Office chairs don't all look the same, but generally they have a comfortable seat. Um, normally they spin, and they're usually on wheels. So you can have lots of fun in long hallways. And here we have a cork board. It's called a cork board because this material here is cork. Cork. A cork is also the thing that goes in the top of a wine bottle because traditionally at least those are made of cork. On the cork board, we have some pins. This here is called a push pin. This is called a thumbtack. It's called a thumbtack because normally we use our thumbs to push them in. And down here, we have some weights. If you want to get big, strong arms like me, you can lift some weights. This behind me is the wardrobe. You could also call this a cupboard or cupboards, but the word cupboard is a bit more general. For example, you have cupboards normally in the kitchen and sometimes also in the bathroom. A wardrobe normally just has things like clothes and shoes. How are you going, Monty? Having a nice day? Now we are in the kitchen. This here is a microwave. Ours is quite an old microwave. How long have you had this? About 30 years. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, I didn't mention this before. This isn't my house. This is my parents' house. Okay, so that's the microwave. Here we have some paper towels, and this is the stove. You could also call this a cooktop. This is an electric cooktop, but some people have gas cooktops or gas stoves. This at the top is the range hood. Range hood. Um. Over here we have some utensils. Um. Utensils is a general word for things like this that we use in the kitchen, like wooden spoons and spatulas. This here is a pot holder for getting things out of the oven or, um, picking up hot pots. I'll put it back later. Down here we have some pots. Those are pots. Here we have a hand towel. This is for drying hands. And this is a tea towel, which we use for drying dishes and cups and cutlery. Things like that. I don't know why we call it a tea towel but that's the name. Here we have the oven, and this is a toaster oven. We don't actually have a traditional toaster. If we want to make toast, we use a toaster oven. Um, these are crumbs because we need to clean the kitchen. And this is a fridge. The long word is refrigerator, but most people just say fridge. The top part here is the freezer. The freezer is where you put things like ice cream, ice cubes, and frozen vegetables. On our fridge, we have lots of magnets. 
if you put, um, if it's a magnet that goes on a fridge, then you can call it a fridge magnet. These are fridge magnets. Here we have a chart about dangerous spiders because we live in Australia. This here is a fruit basket. A fruit basket. At the moment, we have some apples, um, some passion fruit, some mandarins, and a papaya. This is a timer. Some people use their phones these days, but lots of kitchens still have timers. This is a cutting board. You can also call it a chopping board. This one is made of marble, so it's quite heavy. Um, this area here is called the bench top. Most kitchens have a couple of bench tops, so this area here is also called um, a bench top. This here is a coffee pot. As you may have noticed, this isn't actually coffee. We use it for tea, so we use it as a teapot. This thing here is a knife sharpener, so it's something you use to sharpen knives. That's the sink, and this is the dishwasher. And one more thing for the kitchen. This is a calendar. We're now in the laundry. This is also Monty's room. So if you see any mess, it belongs to Monty. Uh, this here is a washing machine. This one is a top loader, or a top loading washing machine. It's called that because you put the clothes in the top. Machines that open on the side are called front loaders, or front loading washing machines. This here is a mop, a very simple word. Mop. Hello, Monty. That noise that you can hear is Monty eating. This thing here is not a mop. This is a broom. Broom. Down here we have a bucket. Bucket. And this on the ground here is a mat. That is also a mat. Here we have... Can you see it? Here we have the clothes dryer. Or more simply, the dryer. This is a laundry basket. And in the laundry basket we have some pegs. So one peg, two pegs. Here we have an ironing board. An ironing board. This is an iron. Um, be careful of the pronunciation. I did an entire video on this. This is an A-ron. In British English, we say A-N, and this is a clothes hanger. You can also shorten it and just say hanger. This door here is called a screen door because that part there is a screen, and we have a lot of screen doors in Australia to keep the flies out. This thing here is Monty's bed, and these are Monty's little friends. That's baby Frank. This little thing here is called a doorstop. It's called a doorstop because it can stop a door. This here is for our cat, Monty. Um, it's called a climbing frame. We got this for Monty because he's an indoor cat, and this keeps him a little bit amused. Um, behind me, we have another type of door. This is a sliding, it's noisy. This is a sliding door because it slides. Here we have a table. Um, this is a dining table. These are chairs, but if you want to be specific, you can call them dining chairs. Here we have some more coasters. And these are placemats, so this is what you put plates and bowls and things like that on. Over here, we have a curtain. Be careful of the pronunciation. I know it looks like curtain, but we pronounce it curtain, and this is something that you will find in most Australian homes. This is a fly swatter. We are now in the lounge room. You can also call it a living room. I'm now standing in front of a wall unit. This big piece of furniture made up of lots of little shelves and cupboards is called a wall unit. Now, on the wall units, we've got lots of bits and pieces. Um, these sorts of things are called ornaments. 
you can also call them knickknacks. Generally speaking, a knickknack is something that's perhaps a little cheaper, and an ornament is often a little bit more expensive or a bit classier. Um, you can use them interchangeably, but normally people use them like that. So, for example, you might call this an ornament, and this probably a knickknack. Um, this is called a figurine. A figurine is like a small statue or a sort of doll. These here are candle holders. Um, if you don't know what a candle is, this is a candle. But obviously you'd put smaller ones into these. Here we have a photo frame. This is actually me when I was, um, going to the formal at the end of high school. Um, so, yeah. The thing on the outside is a photo frame. Here we have some books. Um, now some vocabulary related to books. This here is oops. I hope no one was reading that. Um, this is a bookmark. This part here is called the spine, just like the spine in our back, the spine of a book. The part on the outside altogether is called the book cover, that there is obviously the television. Normally we don't say television, though. Usually we just say TV. This here is a DVD player, a DVD player, and that is a VHS player. Yes, we still have one of those. Now we have a couple of heaters. Um, we don't need these throughout the whole year. Here where we live, we really just use them in winter. Um, and we don't use them at the same time. We did that once by accident, and all the lights went out. This here is a fan heater. A fan heater. And this is an oil heater. Um, over here we have some more coasters, and this is a globe. This thing here is called a liquor cabinet. It's, uh, where we keep alcohol. And this is Frank's favorite part of the house. This here is the couch. You can also call it a sofa, and you can also call it a lounge. We have a cover on our couch, so this is a couch cover. Here we have some more cushions and a blanket. The material covering this floor is called carpet. This is carpet. Carpet is countable and uncountable, so you can say a carpet or some carpet. If you have a small piece of carpet, uh, we would call that a rug. Here we don't have carpet. Here we have tiles. One tile, several tiles. Here we have some bricks, one brick, several bricks, and this is our doorbell. This is a more traditional doorbell. Most people nowadays have electronic doorbells that have a little button. This little thing down here is a doorstop. Okay, Monty? So this is when Monty gets angry. We didn't do anything. What's wrong with you? Okay, we'll, we'll go now. We'll, we'll go now. We'll leave you, Monty. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Learn English from Stories. In this video, we're going to look at some nature vocabulary. We're not actually out in the wild. We're at the Botanic Gardens, so it's sort of organized nature. But it's a very nice place to come for a walk. My mom is again helping me film this video. Hi, Mom. Okay, guys, let's get going. This is the sign that's out the front of the gardens. Okay, it's not nature vocabulary, but I thought there were some interesting things here. I think it's quite obvious what these mean. No dogs, no bikes, no skateboards. They also use reclaimed water. Basically, they're using treated sewage water, and you shouldn't drink it. I guess they have these so they don't get sued. Some warnings. Um, there are some, uh, like ponds and things, 
so you should be careful where you walk. I suppose that's what they mean by water hazard. Um, the ground is a bit uneven in places, so some places it's not totally flat or smooth. There can be falling branches. In other words, bits falling from trees. And there is some wildlife in here, so there are some animals wandering around. As they say, use of this facility may be hazardous. Please be careful. So we're going to do our best not to fall in the water. This thing behind me is a pond. This area of water and the plants on the pond are called lilies. Oh, look, there's an animal. There's a... some sort of lizard in there. Can you see it? There's some wildlife. It's not moving. I think it's real. There you can see another lizard enjoying the sun. Now, this here is called a stump. It's the bit that's left of the tree when it's been cut. This type of plant here is called a vine. A vine is a plant that grows on other things. It sort of climbs and clings to other plants and structures. What we're walking on here are called paths. That's a path. That's another path. We're not actually allowed to go down this path, but those plants that you can see in there that grow in the water, those are mangroves. Mangroves. This thing here is a sprinkler. It's what they use to water the gardens if there's not enough rain. Here we have another stump, and on the ground we've got various things. There are lots of dead leaves. These are dead leaves. There are also lots of sticks. Now, a stick is something like this. But if the stick is quite thin, like these ones, we call them twigs. So a twig is just a thin stick. Here we have another vine. Like I said, a vine is a plant that grows on something else. So here we have a vine growing on this big tree. Here we have another tree. I'm sure you know that word. The outer part of the tree is called bark. This is bark. It's a bit like the skin of a tree. This here is a big piece of bark that was on the ground. Some trees regularly shed their bark. That means that they lose their bark. The bark falls down. After they shed their bark, new bark grows. And here are A of things that you don't find in nature, but are still good to know. This area here, where it goes down, is a gutter. You also have gutters in the street and also on houses. It's where rainwater goes. These little rocks here are called gravel. It's uncountable, so we say some gravel. This plant here is called a fern. So all of these plants here, they're ferns. This is another type of fern. This is called a tree fern. And this here is a bench, which is something that we often have in gardens and parks. These are the roots of a very large tree. Here you can see more of the tree. The roots are the part that go under the ground. Okay, guys. I'm very excited because I didn't expect to see this here. The green stuff growing on this path is called moss. Moss. It often grows on rocks and trees. It grows in damp places. Damp means a bit wet. It needs quite a lot of water to grow. That bird there is called a bush turkey, and they're very common in this region of Australia. That big bird there is a kookaburra. That's the bird that's got the really interesting laugh. Here we have another tree. The main central part of a tree is called the trunk. The pieces that grow out from the trunk are called branches. This here is a branch. 
on this tree, you can really see a lot of the roots. Normally, roots are underground, but here, a lot of them are above ground. And there's the bush turkey. This bird over here is called an ibis. They eat basically anything they can find, so you often see them on school playgrounds after lunch. Here, we have another bird. That there is a duck showing us it's behind. This is another pond. It's much bigger than the one we saw before, but we'd still call this a pond. The plants on the pond are called lilies, water lilies. And there's our friend the duck. I'm not sure if you can see it, but down there we have a turtle. This bird here is building a nest. That little pile there, that's a type of nest. Now these trees here are palm trees. Here we have a few different types of palm trees. Here we have some flowers. This part of the flower is called the stem. This is a stem. These things here on the outside are petals. This flower has lots of petals. The powdery stuff in the middle is called pollen. Pollen. That's the stuff that causes lots of allergies. Um, this little thing here is called a bud. So before a flower blooms, before it opens, it's a bud. So a bud is like a baby flower. These flowers are called daisies. There are lots of different types of daisies, though. As you can see, I'm on the grass here. I know that in some places in the world, you're not supposed to walk on the grass in public gardens, but here it's allowed. And, um, sometimes they even have signs in places that say, please walk on the grass. Here we have a rose bush. There's only one rose on it at the moment, but there are lots of buds, which means that it will probably be in full bloom very soon. If a plant is in full bloom, that means there are lots of flowers on it. Now, roses have something a little bit special. Um, they have thorns. There are other plants with thorns but roses are well known for having thorns. Thorns are the little sharp things that grow from the stems. These little plants here are called weeds. Weeds are plants that are generally undesirable and grow very quickly. There aren't a lot of weeds in the botanic gardens because there are gardeners here. In other words, there are people who are paid to take care of the gardens and get rid of the weeds. And by the way, weed is a slang term for marijuana as well. Remember that I have. There's a baby crying. Bugger off. Oh, it's tough filming outside. The bush turkey was interested in my bag. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Learn English from Stories. Today, we are going to learn some bathroom vocabulary. This isn't actually my bathroom. This is my parents' bathroom. It's the main bathroom in my parents' house. My bathroom is a little smaller, so I thought this one would be a little more interesting. Okay, so we'll start with the mirror. That's me in the mirror, obviously. And below, we have the bathroom sink. So this space here is the sink, and this is the tap. That's for the cold water. That's for the hot water. That is hand soap, okay? So we call this hand soap because it's specifically for our hands when we wash our hands. I think that's pretty logical. Um, okay. Here we have some tissues. In American English, they're normally called Kleenex because Kleenex is a very popular brand of tissue. There we have a fake plant. My mom used to have lots of real plants, but she got a bit tired of maintaining them. So now we have some quite realistic-looking fake plants. 
Okay. Over here we have a brush. This is a nail brush. Um, these are, well, I call them Q tips. But there are a few different words for these. Here we have some toothpaste. I'm sure you know what that is for, toothpaste. Here we have a toothbrush. It's a regular toothbrush. And here we have an electric toothbrush. Some people, um, like to joke about these. And they'll say that these can be used for more than one thing. Um, because they vibrate. Um, I'm not passing any judgment. But in case you're wondering, mine is just used to clean my teeth. Uh, this is moisturizer for the face. This is also moisturizer, but this is tinted moisturizer. It's also called BB cream. Okay, now it's called tinted moisturizer because it has some color in it. It makes you look like you have a bit of a tan. This is also moisturizer, clears throat. Excuse me. This is also moisturizer, but it's for the hands and the body. It's probably very similar to this, but, um, well, I guess they figure they can make more money if they put a different word on the label. Here we have a nightlight. Uh, this is quite clever because even though it's plugged in and the power is turned on, it detects that there is light, so it is off. But when it's dark, it comes back on. In Australia, we normally have switches next to power or on power outlets, so right at the power point. It's just an extra safety feature. So that means there will be no power, and with that, the power is on. What else? Here we have a towel. This is called a hand towel because we use it to dry our hands. And be careful of the pronunciation. We don't usually say handy towel. We link it and we say hand towel, hand towel. Down there, we have a bin. There's nothing in it at the moment because I just emptied it, but, um, yeah, that's a bin. Ah, yes. And down here, we have a hair dryer, hair dryer. That down there is a bath mat. Okay. And on the floor, these are tiles. Tiles. There are also some tiles on the wall. Like, for example, these. These are tiles. Okay. And there we have the toilet. Next to the toilet is the toilet brush. And that is a toilet roll holder. Okay. It holds toilet rolls. It holds toilet paper. Okay? Toilet paper. Very useful stuff. Here we have a bath. So you could call this a bath, or you could call it a bathtub. So bath or bathtub. Um, that's a soap holder. So normally there's soap in there, and this is a plug. So this is what we put in here if you... If we want to have a bath, this is a hose. So a bit different from the hose to the types of hoses that we have in gardens. But we would also call this a hose. Maybe a shower hose or a bath hose. Okay. This is a regular towel. So this is, you could just call it a towel. Or if you want to be specific, you could call it a bath towel. Here we have the shower. Um, this shower is, well, it's particularly big. I think it's a little bit excessive. We don't really need showers this big, but I don't know. I didn't design the house, and neither did my parents. Um, this is a walk-in shower because you walk into it and it's flat. You can walk around. Uh, some showers are like in bathtubs. We wouldn't call those walk-in showers. These are doors. 
More specifically, they are glass sliding doors because they slide. Um, it's now apparently illegal to make shower doors with this type of, um, material. In other words, glass with small pieces of wire because if you fall, it's, it can cause more damage. Um, yeah. But this house was built in the 1982s. So we still have that. Okay, what else? Okay, hot water, cold water. We call this the shower head. Shower head. And here we have a rack. Um, this here, this brown stuff is rust. Because obviously if you have metal, um that is exposed to water very frequently, often it will rust. So, to rust, and the noun is rust, and the adjective is rusty. Here we have some soap in the soap holder. This is a, a face washer. We wouldn't call this a face towel. We would call this a washer or a face washer. Um, I'm sure you know these words. This is shampoo, and this is conditioner. Be careful of the pronunciation. It's not conditioner. It's conditioner. The first vowel is a schwa. Conditioner. Conditioner. And that is some face wash. And that is another bath mat. Oh, yes, and I forgot about this. This is a shower cap. Something you can put over your hair if you don't want it to get wet when you're having a bath or a shower. Because oopsies. Hi guys. Welcome back to Learn English from Stories. Today I have a craft and DIY vocabulary video for you. So we will look at nouns and verbs related to craft and DIY. DIY simply means do it yourself. And normally it refers to doing things around the house, like decorating, renovating, or repairing. But sometimes people also use the term DIY for crafts. Um, you've probably heard lots of teachers say that it's best to learn vocabulary in context, and repetition is also important, which is why I'm going to do a demonstration for you today. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, you will see. There is a method to the madness. Now, because it's the Christmas season, I thought we could make a beautiful Christmas decoration. To make this decoration, what you need is a piece of green cardboard. You will need a marker, a pencil, a ruler, a paper clip, some sequins, some ribbon, and some scissors. Remember, this is, um, it's not countable. You can't say a scissors. You have to say some scissors or simply scissors. And finally, you will need some glue. It's best if you can find some wood glue or craft glue. Those are basically the same things. Um, it's for gluing what? Material, um, like fabric, paper. Or cardboard. But if you don't have that, you can use super glue. Super glue is the really powerful glue that can glue your fingertips together or your or your eyelids. Um, I don't know why you would have it near your eyes, but it's good to know the risks. I'm sure it's happened. Okay, so let's get started. You need to get your cardboard and draw the shape of a Christmas tree. It will be easier if you use a ruler. Once you've drawn the shape of your Christmas tree, you need to get your scissors and cut it out. Cut out. Okay. Oh, shoot. I forgot the little thing. Um, what's that called? Anyway, you know what I mean. This bit here. Uh, so we'll get one of, we'll get a piece of this. Um, a piece of, another piece of cardboard. Cut it. 
Now we'll get some sticky tape and we will stick it to that. Okay, there we go. That's better. Just a little bit on this side. Okay. Now we are going to take our marker and draw the tinsel. Uh, it's really strange. This tiny little thing can be called so many things. Some people call them felt tip markers. Um, in the U.S., they're sometimes called magic markers or sometimes Sharpie because oopsies. Um, because Sharpie is a brand. In Australia, we call them Textas because Texta is a brand. But if you call them markers or felt tip pens, everybody will understand you. Okay, so you take your marker and you draw some tinsel. Just something like that. Okay, now we are going to add some sequins. So you need to open the packet. Oops, see? Now, to stick the sequins to your tree, you're going to need some glue. Well, we'll first put it here. Okay, like this. Then you are going to take, what did I do with that? Oh yes, a toothpick. And you're going to put some glue onto the tree. Just like that. Little dots where we can then put the sequins on. Okay, once you've put the glue on, you can put your sequins on. I hope they stick. Yes. Life is sometimes kind. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? Right, so you'll have something that looks like that. Just gorgeous. Now, of course, we need something to attach it to the tree because this is a Christmas tree decoration. What you can do is get a paper clip and then bend it. So, to bend means to do something like that, like to go like that. So we're going to bend the paper clip to make something that will allow us to attach it to the tree. So we need to put a little hole in here. Oops, be careful of your fingers. Pencil. Okay, there we go. And that is a bit... I think it would be much better, though, if we use some ribbon. Okay, so we take out the paper clip. Yes, we'll use some green ribbon. Ribbon, traditionally, was made of fabric. So it would... Traditionally, ribbon is something like this. But nowadays, ribbon is often made of plastic and things like that. Okay, so we'll take some ribbon. Probably enough. And then, once you have it through the hole, oops, they're falling off. I'll fix that later. Um, you can then tie a knot. We need to do a double knot if it's going to stay. So we have the single knot, and then we can do a double knot. There we go. That is much better. If you don't have any ribbon, you can use string. This is string. When string starts to get a bit thick, it... Well, we no longer call it string. We start to call it rope. So if you have something like this, something that's quite thick... I mean, rope can be, like, really thick. You know, like the things that they use on boats. Um but we would also call this rope. String is something quite thin. I think we're done. What do you think, Frank? Do you think it's beautiful? He's so loyal. See you next time. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Learn English from Stories. Um, because it's such a nice day today, I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you my backyard and in doing so, teach you some backyard and garden-related vocabulary. Now, some people do use the words backyard and garden interchangeably. Um, technically, there is a slight difference. When you say garden, people normally think of a place with lots of plants. Um, you know, 
flowers, vegetables, that sort of thing, and a yard is just an area of land that's normally enclosed by a fence or something, and that is attached to a building. But seeing as most backyards have some sort of plants in them, we can say backyard or garden. Okay? Let's have a look. So, starting there, we have the back door, or one of the back doors, and that leads out onto our patio. This is a covered patio because it has a roof over it. Um... It's a bit of a mess at the moment because it's not actually summer yet, and we don't really use it until it gets quite hot. It's spring in Australia at the moment, which means it's quite warm. But unlike in Europe where people will rush outside when it's 20 degrees, is, that's still a little bit cold for us. So we're waiting till it gets really hot, and in a couple of months, I'll show you what it looks like when we set it up nicely and sit outside here for cocktails. Along here, you see a fence with vines on it, and just there, you see some wind chimes. Uh, I made this in school when I was younger. I thought it was very artistic. But yeah, we think lots of interesting things when we're teenagers. Now here we have more plants. Unfortunately, I don't know their names, but I do know that that is a palm tree. We actually have three palm trees in our, in our garden. Now, in the corner there, we used to have a fish pond, but it was becoming a bit too much work, and there was only one fish left. We had three to begin with, but after a while, we just had, um, one rather large fish. That there with the water, it isn't exactly a fountain. We would just call this a, a water feature. And next to it is a lamp. There we have a statue. This door here is our laundry door. So it's our other back door. And next to that, you can see our hot water heater. Um that there is our shed, which is where we keep tools, uh, our lawnmower, and other things for the, for the house and garden. This piece of concrete is, of course, a path, and the path leads to the clothesline. The clothesline is where we normally hang our wet clothes and sheets to dry, but, um, today, you can see Frank and George there. They were a bit dirty, so we put them through the washing machine and hung them out here to dry in the sun. This particular type of clothesline is very specific to Australia and New Zealand. It was invented in Australia about, um, I think about a hundred years ago, and it's called a hill's hoist. It's really quite clever because you can take this lever here and increase, oops, or decrease the height. Bye-bye, guys. There is one more thing I want to show you. This is the garden hose, so you use this to, to water plants or to clean things. Hello, hello. Welcome to Learn English from Stories. In today's video, I'm going to teach you the names of common kitchen utensils. I'm also going to explain some of their perhaps not-so-common uses. Let's start with my favorite utensil, the bottle opener. You use this to open bottles. That is, of course, if you don't want to use your teeth or your eye socket. Very classy. And now, my second favorite utensil. The can opener. Some can openers look like this, but I prefer these ones. A can opener is used to open these things. Cans. Uh, that is, of course, if they don't have this handy ring on top. I'm sure it's happened to all of us. You go to the supermarket, you see a tin, you think, oh, that looks good. 
Well, it's probably just because you're cheap and too lazy to cook. But anyway, you take it home, uh, you want to open it, and you see this. Another necessity of life is this, a corkscrew. Corkscrews are rather useful if you live in one of the many European countries that still insist on using these corks. Hence, corkscrew. Because after all, I mean, these bottles are just so much more difficult to open, and the wine doesn't taste nearly as good because there's no cork in it. Hello? Yes, I live next door. Um, I was just wondering if you had a corkscrew. Get it? Screw? This is why I'm still single. This is a rolling pin. I don't know how many people actually still have these. I think the last time I used mine was to either crush ice or to kill a cockroach. This, boys and girls, is a ladle. Ladles are used to serve soup or stews. If you haven't heard the word stew, it's just a thicker soup. You can also use ladles as a spoon if your sink looks like this, and your drawer looks like this. Oh, what would my mother say? But it is a little more refined to use cutlery. Uh, this is a knife, this is a spoon, and this is a fork. Remember that cutlery is uncountable, so you cannot say a cutlery, either cutlery or the cutlery, depending on whether or not you want to be specific. As I just said, this utensil is called a knife, but a knife can also look like this, and if you are not a caveman, you will preferably use one of these when using your knife. This is called a chopping board or a cutting board. Spoons can also look like this. These are wooden spoons. Also, another option if your sink looks like this. This is a spatula. I'm sure most of you have one of these. Most of us occasionally eat eggs or pancakes. Um, I normally just use it to kill flies. I'm Australian. This is a peeler. You use this to remove the skin off fruit and vegetables. I can't actually think of any other use for this. If you can, though, please write it in the comments. This one here is called a funnel. This can be very, very useful. This one is called a sieve. Normally, you use this for flour when you want to make a cake or something. Please note the spelling of this word. No, it doesn't make sense. But who said that English was there to make our lives easy? And how could I forget this? This is a fry pan, also known as a frying pan. Ow! Fry pans come in all different shapes and sizes. And even if you don't have a sieve or a funnel, if you are no longer living with your parents, I truly hope that you have one of these. And finally, this item has the simplest name of all. This is a pot. You might have heard this word before. Pot is a slang word for marijuana. So if you haven't spent a lot of time in the kitchen, but you've spent a lot of time engaged in other activities, you most likely will have heard the word pot. But be careful. If you are using pot to refer to marijuana, it is uncountable. And if you are using it to refer to this thing, it is countable. So you can say, I have one pot, he has two pots, etc., etc. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And welcome to another vocabulary lesson. In today's video, I am going to teach you the names for rather common household tools. Some of you might be aware that the word tool can also mean idiot. 
So just so we're clear, when I say household tool in this video, I'm not talking about that annoying cousin who won't go away and just hangs around your house like a bad smell. I'm talking about these things. To start with, we have a spanner, which is also known as a wrench in the U.S. This particular spanner is an adjustable spanner because you can use it on different sized objects. Normally, it's used to tighten or fasten nuts and bolts, but you can also use it in emergency situations to hold on to things, such as this. This is another type of spanner, but this one is called a ring spanner, just like the ring on your finger. Hmm. Would that work? No, maybe not. So, you use this to fasten and tighten nuts on the end of bolts. Uh, this is perhaps not the right size, but I think you get the idea. So, what I'm taking off there is a nut. Normally, they're hexagonal in shape. This is a washer, a washer that's seen better days. And on the right, we have a bolt. This is a regular spanner, but like the ring spanner, it comes in all different shapes and sizes. How exciting. This is a pair of pliers, which you can use to hold on to things and twist things, like your brother's nose, for example. And it can also be used in emergency situations. If you've ever bought furniture at Ikea, then you probably have a couple of these. These are Allen keys, and you use them to tighten nuts and screws. Speaking of screws, here is a screwdriver. This is a flat-headed screwdriver for those very common screws that just have an indented line in the top or a slot. Uh, I don't think this one is the right size. I clearly wasn't supposed to be a builder. It's always nice when you know you haven't missed your vocation. This one here is a Phillips head screwdriver used with Phillips head screws. That sounds oddly like a sexual position. This is an electric drill. I can feel the vibrations already. You use this to put holes into things, but for body piercing, I do recommend you go to a professional piercer. These are drill bits if you want to change the size of your holes. And if you are very young, um, unless you are Amish, you probably haven't seen one of these. This is a hand drill, so just like the electric drill, but you use your hand instead of electricity. This is a tomahawk but I know it looks very similar to an axe. You can use it just like an axe for cutting off fingers or cutting down your neighbor's tree. This is a chisel. Seeing as they've been around for thousands of years, I probably don't need to explain what you use it for. Normally, you do use it with one of these, a hammer. But I'd better not do that on my mother's dining room table. And here we have a mallet, a bit like a hammer, but you use it for big, serious stuff like, uh, tent pegs, or your ex-boyfriend's presents. Here we have a saw. This is a wood saw. As you can imagine, it's used for cutting wood. If you want to cut metal, you need a hacksaw, which you often see in movies. Um. Hidden in the birthday cakes of prisoners wanting to escape. This is a scraper, used to remove wallpaper or, or paint. And here we have a tape measure. This tape measure has a small spirit level on the top here. A spirit level is used to check if a surface is horizontal. This is a bigger spirit level, and it's called a spirit level.